Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video today, I have a very, very important subject that I'm gonna be discussing that I honestly don't think enough people talk about, and that is the difference between no content books versus low content books. A lot of people know the difference. I've pretty much always known the difference, but the difference between them isn't just no content, low content. There's a much deeper difference that again, like I don't think very many people talk about, and I've been discovering it recently, like with my KDP books, and it's something I wanna share with you today. So let's get right into it. First off, for those of you who aren't really familiar with no versus low content books, um, I mean, you probably know like no low content books, like KDP publishing, like we're talking things like notebooks, log books, uh, planners, coloring books, those types of books that aren't like, you know, novels, nonfiction books, like super duper long drawn out books that are obviously high in content and require a lot of words, a lot of text and a lot more effort than, you know, just slapping some lines on a page and there's your notebook. So basically you get the gist on that. Those are, you know, no low content books. But then the difference between those two exactly with no content books, we're talking things like notebooks, we're talking sketchbooks, we're talking um, like composition books, things that are very, very no content as in just lines, blank pages, or even just like a music book that has those chord lines or whatever they're called. Basically no content books, they often don't have much in the way of text. And usually these are the books that your customer will fill out themselves as opposed to you filling them out. It's basically a blank canvas they can draw, write, whatever they want to do. So that's basically the gist with no content books. And then with low content books, we are talking some things that require more effort and aren't just, you know, blank pages, line pages. These are things like log books and planners and activity books, coloring books, those sorts of things that you basically, you've provided somewhat of a template. It's still a low content book. Your customer will still fill it out to some degree, but again, it's not just blank pages, line pages. Like with these types of books, obviously with a planner, you already have like kind of a template. There's like a calendar, the days of the week, that sort of thing. Log book, let's say it's like a weight loss log book, then you'll have a lot more like categories like I don't know like weight and like what you've been eating like water intake like stuff like that and then coloring books obviously coloring pages which is a lot more work than just uh, standard blank pages where everything's the same so basically there's the gist like low content books they're obviously still not high content obviously they do require more work than no content books but definitely a lot less work than high content books where we've got chapters and all sorts of things that you have to completely write up with these at least it's still somewhat a template and your customer will fill it out but yeah basically to sum up no content books blank lined pages your customer fills it in like almost entirely and then with low content books you've given much more of a template but it does require more like you know creating that template finding that template wherever you get it and there is more effort to it and there are again like some more degrees there are obviously much like higher content low content books like let's say as opposed to like a logbook where pretty much every page is the same, you could have a much higher content logbook that maybe like in the beginning even gives you information, tips how to use it, maybe some of the pages different and things like that. So there are different degrees of content and each of these degrees will often play into how the book will sell and exactly like how popular the book will be. Because while there are different niches, like obviously the notebook niche is a niche just like activity books are also a niche. Despite that fact, there are a lot of key differences. And a couple simple ones are just, for example, low content, so higher no content books will often be able to be priced higher rather than no content books because people don't want to pay as much for a notebook as they might be willing to pay for a coloring book. And then other differences, obviously no content books are easier to create, low content books are more difficult to create, but there can be a higher payoff with low content books than no content books. So anyway, these are some of the surface differences, but there are some other differences that people don't really realize on the surface. And they are differences that I have come to realize as I've been creating books that are no content and books that are low content. And here's the thing. So the thing with no content books, so again, we're talking notebooks is that the cover is what matters the most. The design is what matters the most. Because to be honest, as long as it's a notebook, like people don't really care what's on the inside. Like every other little thing that might be on the inside, like a cute this book belongs to page, like maybe some like low gray flower elements that are kind of like on each page. 
that doesn't really matter as much as the exterior design. Because when it comes to notebook, people are gonna type in things like flower notebook, penguin notebook, horse notebook. And when they type in those things, they care about the design, they care about the cover. So with no content books, the design of the cover is far more important because that's what people are going to be looking at first when they're making their purchase. So with say someone types in a horse notebook, they come to the search results, they see a bunch of horse notebooks, they're gonna keep scrolling until they find the design that they like the most. And obviously there are some other like key factors, like they wanna make sure that the size is good, that there are enough pages that they'll need and things like that. But when it comes to no content books, the design again is what's most important. And then when it comes to low content books, the interior is far more important than the exterior. For this example, I'm gonna be using activity books and coloring books. I think with log books, they kind of do fall more in like no content rather than low content. So the design does play a lot more of a role, for example, than the design of the exterior of a coloring book. But at the same time, people are going to be looking at those interiors to make sure that the log book fits their needs. So again, so I'm using the example of an activity book. Let's say someone is searching for, I don't know, a Halloween activity book for kids that are aged two to four. They search for that on Amazon, and then in the search results, they're gonna see a bunch of different options, but you know what they're gonna do? They are most likely going to go with one of the first one, two, maybe even three options. Because when they're looking for these types of books, they're mainly looking for specifications. Because when they're looking for these types of books, they're mainly looking for the certain specifications. And the majority of these specifications have to do with the interior of the book. For one, it has to be Halloween themed. It has to have activity pages, ideas of the activity pages that they want. Again, activity book, it's kind of general. So someone might type in Sudoku book, word search, something like that. I'm just using a general term activity book and that is honestly pretty much it because with these types of books Again, the interior is far more important and people are generally going to be stopping at one of the first books on the search results page That has the highest reviews and meets their specifications And that's mainly because these books are far more detailed and again people don't really care about the cover They care what's inside the book as opposed to a notebook where obviously they're going to be using the inside but the exterior, the pretty cover that they wanted is the thing that they're going to be caring about the most. And what that means to sum up is that it can be a lot more difficult to sell a low content book rather than a no content book. Let's say there are 500 Sudoku books that are popping up in the search results and they all have 50 Sudoku puzzles. Like, Do people really care to look through all those search results if they're all pretty much the same thing to them? No, they're probably gonna stop at the first one, the one that gets the best reviews and the one that ideally has like the most Sudoku puzzles and is offered at the price point that they want. Which is why it can be harder to sell low content books because you have to make sure that you are ranking high enough in order to get to the top of the search results, which can be very difficult when there are already plenty of other books that have been there for probably years that already have plenty of reviews that are probably already at a low price point. It's a lot, lot harder to sell these types of books for that reason. But now that you get the gist of like what the main differences are, you're probably wondering now like, how do you sell low content books? Because you have to compete with all those other books that have been doing it for a much longer time than you have. And you're not gonna be ranking nearly as well as they are. It'll be very, very difficult. You might be able to, but the truth is with how saturated some of those niches can be, you're gonna be way at the bottom and it's gonna be really, really difficult to get to the top. But I do have, fortunately for you, three tips that you can use to get to the top much more easily. It is still difficult, but these tips should help get you a nice starting point for figuring out how you can still do well with things like low content books rather than just no content books. The first tip is to offer something that the best sellers don't have. And this could be numerous different things. A great thing to do is to type in whatever it is you're trying to make. Again, let's say it's like a Halloween activity book. You go to the one that's at the top, the one that has, I don't know, 78 reviews. And what you wanna do is go down to those reviews. You're gonna see probably a lot of five-star ones. I mean, that's why the book is at the top. But because it has made so many sales, likely there are going to be some lower star ones, some one star, some two star, things like that. 
I want you to go to those books, go down to the reviews, and look at the reviews that don't get quite as high of a rating. And what you can take from these reviews is what that bestseller book didn't do or did do that that person didn't like and so they wrote a review about it. And you can take that and improve upon it and create a book that meets those needs in a way that that bestseller didn't. And then other ways that you can compete like on the surface is to just offer more pages, especially when it comes to a coloring book. Let's say that the bestseller is like 50 coloring pages. You can come out with this mega coloring book that has 100 pages. Sometimes a lot of people are looking for a book that just has the most pages, the most bang for their buck. So if you can offer that, that's another excellent way to compete. And now for the second way to compete and still make sales with your low content books is to find good keywords. And when I say good keywords, obviously this is very general. I'm recommending using long tail specific keywords. So as opposed to just activity book, like don't, don't use the keyword activity book because it's so, so general. And if you type that in, you're gonna get some like the biggest bestsellers and like books that have been ranking for a long, long time. So you wanna go after, again, more specific long tail keywords. So as opposed to activity book, we're talking more like Halloween activity book for kids ages two to four. And therefore, though it might have a lower search volume than something like activity book, there are some benefits to these types of keywords. The main one being that because it's much longer and more specific, there are going to be fewer books trying to rank for that keyword. And that might mean a lower search volume, but ideally, if you can find keywords that have a high enough search volume, it's like obviously not as high as like just general activity books, but still high enough that talking about how many products are already competing with that keyword, then these two, they meet more in the middle because as long as the search volume is high enough, again, not like super duper high, but high enough that there aren't that many products competing with it, you are more likely to show up much more quickly and if you are using some of those other things like finding ways to make your book more unique, stand out more, offering something that bestsellers aren't, then people might scroll down a little bit farther and they might find your book that's offered at a lower price point that has more pages, that I don't know, has bigger dots for like, if it's a dot marker activity book, then people are more likely to purchase that book through that long tail keyword that again is more specific and also one of the joys of more specific long tail keywords is that because it's so specific, like let's say you're specifically going after, like your book is specifically marketed as a Halloween activity book for kids ages two to four, then if someone types in that keyword and sees your book, they're gonna be like, well, that's exactly what I'm looking for. And then they are more likely to buy it than just general activity book that could use so many different sub niches and things like that. So the keyword is long tail and it's more specific and there are fewer products ranking for it and it's much easier for your book to be found organically and to also make sales organically. And the very last tip I would recommend in order to beat out some of these best sellers when it comes to low content books is to use Amazon KDP ads. So this is actually something I've been testing out and personally I like, I'm going to be showing you very soon here, but it hasn't been doing super duper well. I think I'm gonna keep playing with it more. Like, I don't think I'm the best at ads in general, but I have heard that ads can do really well. So this is just something I'm recommending. I don't necessarily have a ton of personal experience with it. I am continuing to experiment, but it's only something I'm recommending because I've heard like, this is something that does very, very well. And this is great with low content books because if someone is looking for a specific low content book and then they search for it, again, as I said earlier, they're more likely to go with what comes at the top of the search results. And if you're using ads, then you're already at the top of the search results. And if you are marketing to exactly what they're looking for, then they are more likely to go through and purchase your book. You're going to be boosted like in the organic ranking and then you can make it to the top much more easily and then even stop your KDP ads if you want to because you're already high enough up that people are more likely to purchase your book just because it comes much closer to the top of the search results. Anyway, that is about it. To sum up, no content books, we're talking notebooks and things. The design is what is most important because when people are searching for a particular notebook, they are typically looking for a certain design because the exterior is what is most important because when they search something up and then go down to the search results, they're gonna keep scrolling until they find the book that they like the most that they think is the most attractive to them. And then when it comes to low content books, people are more likely to stop like at the top of the search results 
because as long as it checks out with what they're looking for and has good reviews and then they are more likely to just purchase it right off the bat and not keep looking because why would they need to if everything that they already need is already in a book that's at the top of the search results and has high reviews. So it can be difficult to sell those types of books, but if you are making sure to create a book that is unique and stands out from the competitors, if you are using long tail specific keywords that have much lower competition, but a decent enough search volume still, and or if you are using KDP ads, then you will do much better when it comes to low content books and you are much more likely to sell and get to the top of the search results organically. Anyway, I hope that this has helped you learn a little something more about the world of KDP publishing because it's a very extensive world and there are honestly so many topics to cover when it comes to it. And no content versus low content books is something that I don't think many people talk about, but it's something that I think we should and it plays a huge role into how you're going to make sales. Anyway, I hope that this has helped you and if it has, please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content just like this. I would super duper appreciate it and I would love to have you. Anyway, I hope you all have a fabulous rest of your day. Bye.